Hello and welcome back to the Maccas Talk Hockey Podcast, the podcast where me and my brother Charlie talk about English ice hockey, specifically the NIHL, and we are joined again by Dan. Um, and we're coming to the closing stages of the season, lads. How are we doing firstly? Good. I'm doing good. Yeah. Um, firstly, congratulations to the Milton Keynes Lightning. Um, you are the NIHL Cup champions for 2024. And uh, I think it's fair to say off that performance last night, it was thoroughly deserved. Um, Charlie, I'll come to you. What is What do you have to say to the MK fans? Um, and I think you're shaking a lot of hands tonight. Um, fair play. Um, congratulations on the cup. Um, you did deserve it. Um, I don't like watching other teams win. Um, <laughs> we were literally an overtime away from potentially winning a cup. And um, to be honest, looking at the final, I think Hull did all right, but I think you took over. I think what won Milton Keynes this cup was um, beating Swindon. Um, I think we were definitely their biggest challenge. And um, credit to Milton Keynes. They got that um, rut out of the way. And uh, they did thoroughly deserve it. They were the much better team against Hull. Hull were decent in the first leg, but they weren't great in the second leg. It was a bit silly, really. And um, Tom's rut kiss phenomenal um he's a great player and he really did um score four goals against Hull he he carried the team at times and so did Jordan Headley and it was a it was a good good um thing and I think now they're going to be looking at playoffs because um they've got that trophy out of the way um yeah that's fair enough I'm looking at it a bit differently um I think yes Swindon gave him a hardy game at their place but I think it was all on that first leg, um, Dan. I think that fur because we didn't, we haven't recorded the podcast since um, that first leg, really, have we? And then obviously, I, I thought we'd wait until we'd watched the second leg because there's no point us releasing it on Tuesday and then it happening that evening and we have to wait a whole other week. So I think that first leg was huge, Dan, and we all watched that first leg and they come out of that ahead. And we all said they just need to be within one or two goals because they can definitely do it back at their place. But the fact they were ahead, it must it gave them so much confidence going into yesterday, knowing that they haven't lost there since September. Yeah, I think that's the thing. Obviously, going in a rink where you, we've only lost one game in the whole season, also going in with a lead, it's obviously going to fill you with confidence already. Mm. Um I didn't watch the game yesterday. I wasn't able to watch it, but it seemed like Hull sort of lost their head a little bit. They mm. sort of they sort of got a bit overwhelmed with with the with the game. I think um, I think they gave away a penalty like twenty seconds in, yeah. and it's never never the best thing to give MK a power play in their own rink because they love the space and that's that's what they thrive off is space and obviously that's the reason and for doing so well at home and. Yeah, they've got a Debbie power play and it's never the best thing to do. <laughs> yeah, Charlie, we'll go on to the attack in a minute. Um, but I want to talk about the defence because the defence has come under some criticism this season, especially in those away games. But last night was the best defensive performance I've seen from Milton Keynes. Um, every player, Christie, Green, um, Nags, every defenceman, Griffin, who'd not but played for over three, four weeks, they come in and they blocked everything which went towards net. They just flew in front of the net, uh, in front of the puck. And I thought the forwards as well, they defended the other forwards, which they have to track really, really well. Headley was solid in goal. The chances which Hull did have, he just easily saved. Um, and I think they really built that game, that that victory off the defensive structure um, and I, I think the crowd as well, obviously a sold out crowd. I've heard the whole fans are actually quite good, um, but 2000 plus MK fans in there. You can imagine that was giving them even more um, strength in their performance. Um, so, yeah, I just want to give a shout out to Milton Keynes, their defensive game in that final. I really think that was what won it them in the second leg. And we know they've got the forwards, Charlie. Um, how good is that forward depth when they've got everyone fit? I know they're missing. Well, they're not missing Gulliver. They 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 scratched him because he's only just come back. But they had to scratch field, I think, because they had too many forwards. The only player I think they have out injured is Soldier, really. So their forward depth is phenomenal, isn't it? Um, MK are unstoppable on their day. Um, and um. They are an absolute wagon on their day. Defensively, they proved 
what we we needed from them. Um, Lewis Christie has been excellent in the semi-finals and the final. For mm. me, he's been their player of the tournament in terms of the cup. Um, and he's I think, captain as well. Um, yeah, he's been he led by example. Um, and then just their depth. I think they had a third line of Max Stewart, Liam Stewart, and Tom's Ruckus. And <laughs> we, we, said, we said this at the start of the season. The expectation was obviously for me personally it was for them to win two trophies. And so they still need to do that, but they ticked off one of the big boxes, which was winning a trophy. They mm. needed to get over that rut. And uh, with the squad they have, they, sh- they, they, they should have done it, and they have done it. They've won a trophy, um, and they'll want more. Um, them players are good. They are top-notch players, and um, their depth just speaks numbers. Um, I think Hull played their top line for most of the first and second period. I'd say 40 and- minutes plus of the game they played well, their top line. Probably Chamberlain was kicked out about 15 minutes <laughs> but um they played their top they, they were going to play their top line until the goal started going in for most of the game and um mk don't have to do that they can just roll through three lines and then every now and again put out their fourth line and it's a huge advantage and um and it, it showed it really did show in the game and i think um i think mk were the deserved winners their fans would be happy oh my lights are going crazy but um I think they'll be buzzing and uh, they'll probably find it funny how I'm annoyed. But it's a good thing I'm annoyed because they'd be annoyed if Swindon won a trophy. Um, yeah, it like seems said, like seems like your them. lights seems like your lights are replicating the lightning, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your lights telling us something there. Um, no, I'm joking, but down their forward depth, Charlie mentioned it. Just to go through their lines they had last night. Um, this and they've got Gulliver to add in this, probably for Ripley, because I don't think Ripley can play in the playoffs. But they had the Venus Herman Lawrence line, which I thought was was decent. It was a decent line, but that wasn't the line of the night. It was the Ruckus Stewart Stewart line, which just caused whole problems. Um, when Sobchak, Speck, and Chamberlain weren't playing on that line, um, when sorry, when that was the line which come uh, against the Venus Herman one. And then you had Wallace, Ripley and McEwen as well. And then a fourth line of Hamill, Hamill, Grinnell Park. And it seemed like it was the Ruckus, Stuart, Stuart line, which had the license to do what they wanted. And obviously Tom's Ruckus got that hat trick. Oh, um, so they're going to be dangerous for playoffs, aren't they, Dan? And they have surely got to be favourites with the depth they've got and the one-off games. Yeah, I I always speak big about depth. I think it's such a big advantage in games. Any game, it's always an advantage. When you're having a third line like that going up against, obviously, no offense to Hull, but a third line that they've got, yeah, it's so hard. To, it's so hard to match teams. <laughs> like, because obviously, it's all about line matching at the end of the day. You can't just keep the top line out. Obviously, as much as teams would want to, but yeah, the depth is so important in games. And MK have MK have have it to a T. They um they've got they can they can fully rotate through all lines and still still compete with every line that they're playing against. Mm. And I think if you can see it when they play, they never get tired. Literally every line comes out fresh. And if they needed to have one line go on for a bit longer, they can do it. No no player would would not want to be uh, like no player would not be able to make it on any line. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just they they've got such a big advantage with that. Tim Wallace has got a really nice little selection to pick from <laughs> with the lines, and he picked it perfectly last night. I've got to say, I thought so the, the, the the lines just matched Hull to a T. And we'll go on to Hull because I think everyone um, has no not not noticed. I'd say recognised that they have lost and they did get beat quite comfortably in that second leg. But it's their second season. They've been going for one and a half seasons. Um, you can tell their depth isn't quite as good as some of the top teams at the moment because it is their second season. But the fact that they've competed, they've beaten every single team at least once. They knocked Leeds out of the cup. They gave MK that really good game in the first leg. Looking back at it, it they actually have had a really, really good season. And um, yeah, it, it's one of them, in it? I think Brock, he didn't have his greatest game, did he? Um, I think MK really picked on him. And I think when... MK love it most, right, when you play to their strengths. When Brock and Barmer are pushing up the ice, which I'll want to do because that's the way they've always played this season, and I, I respect Matty Davies for it, but that plays to MK's advantage because they can quickly break out with the speed they've got on their lines and they catch Brock and Barmer in behind. And then the other players Hull had, they tried to play that way. And I think 
I think it was just a case, Charlie, of Hull tried to keep rotating to try and get back to that top line of Svek Sobchak, who always looks like he can create something Sobchak. But MK just shut that line down and they knew that they had the strength and depth to overpower the rest of the team, didn't they? Yeah, I don't think Hull had their best of games on the um on the Saturday night, no Tuesday night. Um, but I think MK had one of their best games. Yeah. Um, defensively, like you said, they played at their top, and attackively they were unstoppable. Um, so yeah, they they turned up for the big occasion, and they've been they've been crit- critiqued for that many times over the since they've come back to the league, mm-hmm. and so um they've shut up a lot of people. Um and uh. Yeah. They'll they'll want to win that other cut with Hull. Uh, it's been a decent year for them. Um, I think they'll be a bit disappointed. I'm I'm not gonna deny. It. I think if you spoke to Matty Davies, he'd be like, mm, I would have wanted a bit more. I wanted a bit more from that 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 cup final second leg. I think they'll be disappointed with how they played. But as an overall, they'll want to make Coventry now. And I think if they get to Coventry, I think it's been a great year for them as a club. Um, yeah. I think they, they they need to get Coventry for their fans. I think it'd be really important for them because it shows that they're able to compete with the best. They'll be able to make it to both cup semi-finals slash finals, potentially. Um, they'll be able to do well in the league. They've been able to battle against any team in the league. Um, and um, this is only doing them good for next season. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not a shout out, but we have to mention him, Bobby Chamberlain as well. We, when um, Hull were losing, he's just... Wound everyone up, didn't he? Gave pushes to all their players. That's that's what Bobby Chamberlain has always been like in the end. Um, I don't think he's ever going to change. And you got I'm not against it. it. Yeah. I'm, I'm. This is the thing, right? Don't get me wrong. People will say childish. They threw their prams out of the toys. They're they're passionate guys. Prams out the they toys. Wanna <laughs> um, they want to. They want to win. What? Like, I'd be frustrated if maybe some players didn't show that fight and. I oh, saw no, some I MK. I saw some MK fans online saying, "Oh, Hull didn't even put up a fight today." I'm like, "Yes, they did. They came out and they gave it 110 percent from the whistle, and your team just outplayed them. They dominated. Like, that's what happened. It wasn't that Hull didn't put in 110 percent. They went there with the mindset that we're going to win this and we're going to do it and we're going to do the impossible. And it just happened to be that MK, in the nicest possible way, humbled them a little bit and and outplayed them." Yeah, and I did. think it's a great learning experience for Hull. Oh, because yeah. They've had to go through this over the last couple of seasons. And they've got some players still in that squad. Green, Christie, Headley, Liam Stewart. Um, they're just a couple who have had to experience losing in a playoff final to eventually come out and win a cup for the first time Milton Keynes. And I bet that feeling for them players after not winning a cup for so long was such a big relief for them. And um. Yeah. It's only going to do their confidence. The thing, the thing I can relate it to, Charlie, and they might not turn out quite like the Leeds Knights, but Leeds um, obviously had the Chiefs. They had a really tough season. They didn't have their home. The second season, they got to a cup final, just like Hull did, yeah. and Swindon ended up beating them. Hull have lost this final. So who knows, pardon me, where in a couple of seasons Hull could be after getting some more players in and developing the squad. So, yeah, I agree with that. It, it, I wouldn't be too disheartened as a whole fan. As for MK, the perfect result, Dan, obviously winning the trophy. Their first trophy, actually, since 2017. That is pretty bonkers because of the size of them. But they've got that monkey off their back now. And you'd think that the players have felt that trophy, that winning feeling, and that's going to make them even more motivated to go and win the Coventry playoffs, which I'm going to move on to now. Um, the groups are pretty much confirmed. It's literally just two teams, which are Peterborough and Telford, who are battling it out for that final group decider. But, Dan, here we go then. The <laughs> Bees have made the playoffs. They have proven 90% of fans wrong, I'd say. There's probably a few Bees fans who um, confidently tried to say that Bees would get playoffs, and fair enough to them, because they have proven everyone wrong. They have got to the playoffs, um, and that is a huge achievement for them, considering they probably are the lowest budget team in the league, aren't they? Yeah, hundred percent. What a season it's been for the bees. I think no one, no one can say it's not been a number of season for them. Um, obviously, like you say, with the budget and looking like they've got the lowest budget, they obviously got a bit of an advantage from having obviously Bison, Bison, oh, yeah. not participate. So they've taken a few of their players. But at the end of the day, credit to everyone in the Bees. 
all Dub Shepherd, Dom Goodbye, every, everyone, the way he's built his squad, the way he's got them to play, I don't think it takes anything away from that. Um, we've been to a few of their games this season yeah. and they're in their rink and they're always fun to watch. They always put up a fight against anyone. Um, I've, I mean, I can't remember the last time I didn't see a battle in that rink this season. Uh, they've been battling with everyone all season. They've had some big wins. They've obviously taken some losses, but at the end of the day, everyone needs them. And yeah, what season it's been, what team? <laughs> yeah, um, they beat the Solway Sharks. What was it in the end, Dan? Was it? It was um, four three in the end. They couldn't quite get it yeah. to overtime, could they? Solway. Yeah, go closer at the end. It did get really <laughs> close. And let's credit to the Solway Sharks in that game that they were three one down. Um, the bees looked comfortable. They got it back to three three. But the Bees, as you said, relentless this season, battling at home. They know how to play on that rink. They got the 4-3 victory. Um, and unfortunately, Solway do not make the playoffs this season. Um, we'll get to them in a second. But there's one player, Charlie, I want to mention, who did um, Bees got from Basingstoke. And we all questioned, not we all questioned, but we said, can he fill the boots of welcome from last season? And boy, has he filled the boots. He's got his 50th goal this season. Balaz. Um, shout out to the Bees quickly. They got a signed Balaz jersey. I actually did give it to Dan um, because he is a former Basingstoke player. But they gave us a little Balaz shirt signed by him. But Charlie, Balaz, unbelievable. And he is a massive reason why they've got playoffs this season, isn't he? Yeah. When your name rhymes with Malas, you know you're going to... <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Okay, I'll give that to you. Um, Marcel Balas. Um, thank you very much. Okay, fair enough. Um, but yeah, 50 goals for him this season. Um, he's um, he, he got a... the best thing on welcome, he's got a two-way game. Um, he's got an yeah. unbelievable two-way yeah, game, Balas. And I thought... One of the best, yeah, I'd um, say. I'd say one um, of the best. He PKs with goodbye. He does everything. And... um. He's really taken that role of um being a top player for a team on his shoulders. And um yeah, he's um he's a very good player. Yeah, he is. He's shown I think he at Basingstoke, Dan, is it because you obviously you watched him all season, is it fair to say that he kind of didn't quite have the free um the the, the freedom to play to what he can be, which he has at B's, because Gail was that guy? Do you get what I mean at Basingstoke? What do you think the reason has been for such an improvement in points? Because you've always said that his two-way game and just hockey IQ has always been a strength of his. Yeah, I mean, when you're playing with Gale, obviously the energy that he brings, he's a fan favourite wherever he goes. Mm. It's always hard to sort of get that upper hand on the second import. Um, he was a guy that you could always rely on. He never really... He, he got... He started off on the second line and moved and moved himself up to the first line. We saw we never really had a set lines through last season, to be honest, because obviously the depth yeah. of our team wasn't the best. Um, I think, like like I say, with the depth of bees, I think that does help a lot. I think yeah, you sort yeah. of you don't really have to have players play in a certain role. They can sort of have a bit more freedom throughout throughout the team because of the lines that they've got. Um, but I think. I think you can't look away from he's playing with Dom Goodbye. I think he just loves playing with Goodbye. He didn't really have that player like Goodbye playing with him in Basingstoke. Um, obviously, they're both from the same country. They've obviously they've probably grown up playing the same way, um, and they just seem they just seem to bounce off each other so well. Everything that one player does well, the other the other player copies them. Yeah. The other player, if he doesn't do so well on one thing, the other player will come in and do it for him. It's like. They just balance off so well and they're such a good partnership together. 100%. And um, going into playoffs, again, I think people I think people predict them not to make it, but that's going to work in their favour again because they're the underdogs. They that, That's almost no pressure on them to go out and just do what they can. And I'm sure Dom is going to say that to the lads. Look, people are going to say we're not going to make it, but we got nothing to lose. Let's go out and we know we're better than everyone else on our home rink. So... Fair play to the Bees. Um, they made the final spot of the playoffs. As for Solway, um, I still think it's a decent season. And Charlie, I'll come to you in a second. I still think it's a decent season. It's their first time in the league. 
they I think they started off the season really they struggled a lot didn't they they were kind of finding their feet we t- we spoke about that with Gardiner and how every, it was new for everyone the whole league including the coach as well they started to pick it up a bit and then I think to the back end of the season I think the depth just showed that they're not quite the national league depth they've got and I think we predicted, well, we did predict this, didn't we, guys? I, you two had him at ninth. I had him just making the playoffs, but they've just missed out on the playoffs. And I think it was silly for a lot of people to predict them to get top four and or even top three because I don't think any new team in this league, we would have said it for any new team, I don't think they can um, finish in that top three when they've never played in the league before. And... I think they've still had a decent season. They've definitely had one of the best seasons um, for a first team in this league. So, Charlie, I'll come to you about it. Um, I th- I think they'll be a bit disappointed. I th- I think that's the- I think if we ask John Sh- John Strange, um, and I'd love to get him on the pod again, I think he'd say it's been okay. That um, there's been some amazing moments. For example, Solway are a hundred tickets away from selling out again. And I know when John John took over with the other owners, they were getting 500 people a game, 400 people a game. And I think now they're hitting nearly a thousand marks. So I think that's the most important part of their season is the fact that they're filling out the rink. They're getting the rink full, which is only going to help their club. And then on the ice, like me and Dan said, we did expect something like this, but I think they've been really good. I think they've shown so many bright spells. They've beaten, in my opinion, probably the best squad in the league in terms of on paper in Milton Keynes at home, they beat them in uh, one game and then they took them to OT the next night. They beat Leeds at home. Um, They beat every team in the league in their first season and um, they've challenged everyone. Um, Some of their players have stepped up really nicely from the league below and um, they've, they've been a very nice addition. And I must say, I don't know about Dan, but they were my favourite away trip of the (laughs) Um, 100%. Just the experience of Solway in Scotland, I think. Because we've double never had a team. In Solway. I hope Mr. Nell or whoever does the um, fixtures next year bangs us a double header in Solway so I can, um, me and Dan can get in a van again, <laughs> book some dodgy hotel again, and um, have a good time. Because, um, oh, mate, Solway always Shark pays off. <laughs> would be, it's been fun. And I know that next year they're going to put together a better squad. They're oh, going to yeah. put together a team which 100%. is going to probably get playoffs. And um, them Scots won't be happy they didn't make playoffs this year. Oh, yeah, it's um, going to motivate the next... them. They're, they're going to want to get it next year. I think next, next year, year gonna be, is um... the minimum. Next year, just like Hull coming up last season, they knew they were going to improve their squad. Next year is the minimum, Dan, for them to get playoffs. Um, What was I going to say? Uh, oh, what was I going to say? They have had, yeah, as Charlie said, they have had some really big moments. Um, Obviously, they've... um. Gardiner hitting a ridiculous amount of goals for his first season. Um, I think he's actually outperformed Dunbar this season in terms of just, I don't know. What, what do you think? Obviously, you're the Gardiner fan. I think he's actually <laughs> hit such high expectations, um, Gardiner. Yeah, I think I think what it is, is when when you saw that Solway team, obviously people knew of Dunbar. All the lights were on him. He he performed really well at the start. Oh yeah, of the he's, season. he's had a really obviously, good season as well. He's done really well through the whole season, but uh, in particular, the first half of the season, he was he was unreal. Cool. He was he was everywhere, and then I think slowly Gardner just sort of slowly just got himself in there, slowly got himself up the lines. I think obviously now he's finished on the top line, and he's um he's uh, he's had a really good season. I think no one can complain about him. I think Solway fans will be loving him, hoping that he can stay next season. Um, obviously, it's up to him what he does. But um, I think, yeah, the first time in England, I think, first time in England. Yeah. And um, he's he's performed really well. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of teams in the National League were looking at him. 100%. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the last thing on Solway, um, Ross Murray is retiring as well. Um, at least he got some... National League experience, and I thought he was all right. Um, he put his heart on his sleeve, didn't he, Charlie? And he went into every game battling hard. On sa- Sunday, just as an example, <laughs> he got a high stick to the head. His head wouldn't stop bleeding. He got bandaged up, come straight back with this massive bandage around his head <laughs> to play for the Sharks. I just think that shows how much love and passion he's got for um, Solway. So hopefully he has a really good last weekend with the Sharks. 
Um, let's move on then, because there was some hundred point hitters this weekend. Um, three players in particular, and we're going to start with Venus. Venus hit it first. We're going to go with Venus first. Um, he obviously come back from a ban, and the fact that he's managed to get a hundred points, Charlie, after having a six game ban, I think that tells you everything you need to know about what a player Venus is. Yeah, he's good. Um. He, he was good in the cup final as well. Um, yeah. He's been a big part of this Milton Keynes. He, got the, he, got the, he kicked him off with that big goal, didn't he? Um, and I think for him, I think the best thing he's added to MK is his um, elite league prowess. And not just a youngster who's coming down from the elite league, a guy who's played 10 seasons there. And it, yeah. it shows when you watch him play. He, um, he plays at a different speed. And um, he's one of them players who... You'd say if you want to watch ice hockey, watch Venus because um he does it he does it right he does he makes the right plays and um he's just been huge for Milton Keynes. Yeah, I think he's the most intelligent player. Um, I think that tells with his assist and seventy assists for Milton Keynes. I think he's the highest, the player with the most assists this season and getting a hundred points. That's not only Herman, that is Venus. He's a massive part of why Herman's managed to get the the goals he's got this season because Venus has got that IQ to feed him, doesn't he? Yeah, he, he brings out the best of that top line. I think he's the guy that is the most all-rounded on that top line and just, like you say, feeds Lawrence and Herman around him. He's obviously going to be loving it because he's got two absolute snipers with him. <laughs> um, but, um, but yeah, he's... I, I did say, when, when he was going through that ban, I thought Lawrence looked a bit quiet. Oh. I think Venus brings out the best of Lawrence. Did yeah. Lawrence score last night as well? Did he score yeah, he did. Yeah, so um, I think he scored the weekend before as well mm -hmm. when Venus was back. And yeah, I think he is like the brick between between that whole line, just keeping that all together. 100% and uh, well done to Venus. 100-point mark in your first season. Another player who's done that. And um, let's just say I've received a lot of stick online. Um, Luke Ferrara, 100 points. I'm just going to read this out. He's the first Phantoms player, British player, to hit 100 points in a season. He's the first Phantoms player to hit 100 points in a season since 2008. Um, and he's hit it in a team which has finished fifth, has had quite a tough season, Charlie. Um, he is ridiculous, isn't he? And um, we'll go on to the debate in a second. But how good has Ferrara been this season? He is... He's really carried Peterborough through those tough times and got some big goals. Luke Farrar is an animal. Um, he's I don't even think he's playing a hundred percent every week. Mm -hmm. Um the the guy when he wants to turn it up is unreal. Um he scored this goal against Swindon, I remember. We got it back to three three in Peterborough, and they got a power play and he got it um on the left side of the blue line and he just sniped it top right corner. Um He's got a bullet of a shot, a really good pass, and um, he keeps that Peterborough team playing well. I think he's getting more out of Slavkowski, and um, he's just any any team would take him on their top line, and he he played massive minutes for anyone. Um, he is just one of the best players in this league, and yeah, I don't think that's a debate. Dan, we'll go on to it. Um, I put a tweet out, obviously responding to that 100 points, and I said he's one of, if not. Um, arguably the best British player. And I know Kieran Brown's in this league and Brown is probably the best player in this league. He, he is. He is the best player in terms of British player. And he's just an absolute unit of a guy. And if you haven't checked it out already, go um, check out our interview we did with Brown. We did an hour's interview, me and Charlie. Um, it went, it was such a good interview. Um, but back to it. I think Ferrara, I think he's, Maybe he's not quite as good as Brown, but he's definitely just behind him with Venus. Like, I just wanted to read this out. Brown even-handed goals has got 40 even-handed goals. Ferrara's got 39 even-handed goals. Even-handed assists, Ferrara's got 42. Brown's got 37. I, I just think they're completely different players, Um, but I just think Ferrara doesn't get as much respect, even if... Brown is slightly better than Ferrara. I just think Ferrara, what he's done this season in a Peterborough team which has struggled, it's not even been at their best. It's just ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, he's always been an unreal player. I remember back in the EPL days when you had all the Ferrara brothers on one team oh. and they're always the ones that you never wanted to play against. And the fact he's also performed in the Elite League also shows, shows quality, like the same as Venus as well. Obviously, coming down from the Elite League, showing that he can do it in the Elite League. 
Um, but yeah, like you say, Peterborough, you don't get the res- if he was in a different team, I think he would get a hundred percent more respect yeah. from the whole league if he wasn't in Peterborough. I think that people just sort of look over him because of where they are in the league and stuff like that, and the sort of team they are. I think Brown is obviously the star guy. Everyone's going to look at him. Everyone looks at him when you say when you think of a player. Um, but yeah, they are totally different players, but they both play their game so so well into the top standard of this yeah. league. I I know I read that even handed stats out. Um, I know there's more to it than just even handed play, but five on five, I I really don't see many players, if not any players, better than Ferrara. I I, I just think his whole round game is just ridiculous, but. Brown on the power plays, I think he's got double the amount of goals as Ferrara. Um, and yeah, Brown, yeah, I, I I got slated for it, but I, I don't think he's that far off Ferrara um, to Brown. Um, and obviously he's got the experience on it. I think that's credit to Brown as well, that he's he's doing that at 23 years old. Um, Charlie, I know you've got a rush off Let's at seven. move on to the best player in the league. Yeah, Charlie, yeah. I, you've got a rush off at seven, but we'll quickly talk about the best player um in your opinion now I, I believe he is as well but Thomas Malazinski gets a hundred points and you weren't even there to witness it <laughs> <laughs> I was um I was at a film uh, festival this weekend uh watching a very good filmmaker called Danny Gavertz but um man Thomas Malazinski uh his two-way game elite his attacking game is elite uh, he's the heartbeat of Swindon. He's back next season. Um, he made me fall in love with hockey. I would back him against McDavid. Um, and people know that. Um, it was good until you just said that. And, we um, definitely yeah, know that, mate. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to see him in playoffs and we shall see how the season goes. Um, I just, I love watching Malazinski. I remember, for example, he left us when we went to the NIHL one. Hockey became a bit boring. He came back. Hockey was exciting again. Hey. Um, <laughs> him and Malas are sick together. Him and Nal, sorry, are sick together. And um, I'm going to leave on this. Mill and Keynes, fair play you on the cut. Um, hopefully we beat you in playoffs. And um, you guys are a wagon. Um, I would say best of luck, but hopefully Swindon um, can um, turn up this year. Um, have a good well, one. I'm good, out. Good exit, Bye-bye. Charlie. Um Nice one. Thank you. Sorry, Charlie does have to go, but we'll finish it off um, with me and Dan. Um, I know Charlie's biased towards Malazinski, isn't he, Dan? And I do agree with a lot of what Charlie says. Um, The bit for me is he's 37 years old. He's just hit back to back 100 point seasons. I can't remember the last player to hit back to back 100 point plus seasons in this league. Um at 36 and 37 years old. It's just, it is ridiculous, isn't it? And um, you, everyone has their debates out there, but watching him week in, week out, obviously this is your first season being able to watch Malazinski week in, week out. Give us an unbiased view on how you've seen him this season. I think, obviously he got a shot, but I wouldn't even say that's his best aspect. I would say the best thing that Malazinski has got is the way that he can go into the corners, he gets the puck, he's a bit like Ballas for that, gets the puck, he's got such a good stick lift, he'll just, he, a player could be skating up the ice, and he will just, he'll just nick it off them, and they won't even know where it's gone. And he'll <laughs> yes. be gone, and then they'll go and try and hit him, and they won't even be able to knock him over. Like, that's the best thing about Malatinsky, I think there is, is the way that he can hold onto a puck. He can hold onto a puck in the corner, get hit by about three guys, and still make a pass across the ice all the way to the D man and then all the way back to him and he'll score. I think <laughs> that is that's that the is, best way I think of that, describing Malazinski. That is <laughs> such a good yeah, that is actually really I'm glad you said that. And we actually asked Kieran Brown about who's the toughest players to play against. His first player he said, and the only player he said was Thomas Malazinski. He said Malazinski could do it all. He's got everything and his IQ is just i mu- ridiculous has become one of my favorite words by the way I, I i thought i'd just put that out there if i say ridiculous a lot i'm just saying ridiculous a lot because it's one of my new vocab words but he is ridiculous um and he's got 100 points so i think that game just summed him up as a whole he got a he got a goal he got an assist and he got a further assist and all three of them 
contributed so well to the goals and the win against MK. So, yeah, we speak about him a lot, but well done to Malazinski, Brown and Ferrara. Um, let's review the rest of the weekend then, Dan. Um, starting off on the Friday, um, the Wildcats beat the Pitbulls 5-0. Again, we're going to say the exact same thing. It's just about getting through these final two games. They've got two final ones to get through, Dan. And then Bristol can have that revamp and they can go again next season, can't they? Because the Wildcats just schooled them. And Bristol still had about nine power plays, I think it was, in the game. They didn't score. Yeah, they're not going to be happy with that. And the fact that they're getting beat like that in their own rink as well. Normally, when you go back to your home fans, you sort of you put up a bit of a better performance. Obviously, you can understand it in the away games, but at the home games, when they're getting beat like that as well, it's it's never going to be good. Um, fair play to their fans. I, I think oh, when when we were there, they were still selling out. They were still selling out every week. I think that's credit to them. Obviously, it's always good to have a loyal fan base. Um, I'm sure next season they're really going to be hoping to put up a good performance for them because they do deserve it. I think they've had two really tough seasons. Obviously, last season was understandable. But... Um, this season on paper looked a bit better, but it just seems to not have gone their way. Um, they've really started next season well with the signings that they've got. Obviously, re-signing Butler, Cochrane, White Stay. And now I'm sure there'll be a few more to come. Um, but yeah, they, they've obviously they're looking for next season now, and they've really started off well. And just to uh, put the icing on the cake. They had a power play, and we we scored two short-handed goals, Dan, on the same power play. And I think that just shows it's not quite gone their way this season. And um, we have no doubts they'll be better next season. I did want to just mention one last thing. Um, it was a bit naughty, wasn't it, Dan? Um, Aaron was skating after the puck. Um, Jay Warren was on the floor and Jay Warren slashes him in the wrist. Uh, sorry, not wrist, in the knee. There's no need for that, is there? Um, I know we protect our Wildcats boys, but I think every other fan would be frustrated at it. It was a cheap shot and we've called other players out for this season um, for doing that kind of stuff. It's not, you shouldn't be doing that in the game and it was a really stupid play, wasn't it? Yeah, you could see, you could see it was intentional. Yeah. It, it was, it wasn't even like it was by mistake. You could totally could see gone. What, what Aaron was, was just skating do. up the ice and he just slashes his knee. Yeah. And you never see Aaron go down and sort of, Slash his stick and stuff like that. So you know, you know, it was obviously, you know, obviously got him, and obviously he's still injured. Um, but but yeah, it was not nice to see, especially in a game coming leading up to playoffs as well. You never want to see a player that's played hard all season and then miss out on the playoffs. No, it's um, hopefully not it's nice all right. We we don't really know what um, the injury is, um, but hopefully he makes a recovery because. Aaron will definitely be wanting to play in this playoffs with the team we've got, the chance we've got to make Coventry to get over that playoff hump. Um, yeah, I don't like calling players out, but I thought that was a really dirty play. And we called Hewitt out for slashing Baron on the wrist. And I just don't like those sorts of hockey plays. I completely understand being a rat and winding up teams and giving a bit of pushing afterwards and stuff like that. But cheap shot plays like that, there's no place for that in the game. So, yeah, well, I'll leave it at that. Um, Saturday, there was some pretty bonkers games, wasn't there, Dan? Um, we'll start with the Peterborough Phantoms versus the Seahawks. The Seahawks taking a 3-0 lead, up steps Luke Ferrara and the Phantoms, and they just beat them 8-4, Dan, <laughs> away from home as well. It's like this league, it just keeps on giving, even though we're at the back end of the season and some of these games don't mean much. Fair enough to Peterborough, Slava and the Phantoms, who've had a tough couple of weeks. And they go out 3-0 down and beat the Seahawks in their own barn, which is not a not an easy place to go to. Yeah, it's mental. I think, what was it, eight, eight unanswered goals? Uh, it was six unanswered goals. Six, six unanswered goals. Yeah, that's, that's unreal. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, these games still mean a lot to Peterborough, obviously, depending on what group they want to get into. Um, so they're still going to be fighting till the end. Um I think I think Hull were resting a few players. I think they were obviously looking looking ahead to the cup. Yeah. Um. So obviously it's understandable that they probably weren't playing at their best, and they had had a cup game a few days before. Um. But credit to Peterborough. I mean, yeah. It's it's hard to go to Hull. Obviously, like like we all know, 
obviously we both supported teams going to Hull and um it's always a tough ring to go in. Long long old journey up there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, hundred percent credit to them. I'm sure I'm sure they silence the whole fans. <laughs> yeah, it it shows though that um like they are scary though. I know Peterborough haven't been at their best season, uh but at the best this season, but they are scary when they're on it. Um the other shocking game <laughs> 4-2 up the Solway Sharks and Telford score eight unanswered goals to beat them 10-4. And I know we talked about it Solway's first season, but that's the results. That's that's the kind of um, stuff which you don't deserve playoffs on, isn't it, Dan? When it's crunch time, you're 4-2 up and you end up losing 10-4 um, halfway through the second period. And yeah, Telford, man, they are looking like a bit of a wagon going into playoffs. Another four-point weekend for them. Everyone is hotting up at the right time, aren't they? You don't want to play Telford in the playoffs at the moment. Yeah, that's what I mean. You've obviously got people saying, who would you rather have, Peterborough or Telford? To be honest, I don't think it matters. I think they're both as dangerous yeah. as each other. I think every team that's in this playoff in this playoff uh, group, I think both groups are so hard to call. Because you've got teams like Romford, Bees, Peterborough, Telford... They they love being underdogs. Yep. Like you saw Romford last season, they were the underdogs and they got to the final. Yep. Like they love it. You've got bees. They've got players like Liam Morris. He loves being an underdog. He loves winning and he loves proving people wrong. And that's the type of mindset you need to have when you go into playoffs. Because at the end of the day, it's hockey and anyone can beat anyone on their day. Exactly. Um, we'll go through the playoff groups in a minute, but just to finish off the results. Obviously, we mentioned Malazinski got his hundredth point. The Wildcats beat the Lightning. 4-2. They haven't been able to beat us on our own rink this season. Um, two home games we played at um, the Link Centre against them. One of uh, uh, one of the other games was a home away game, wasn't it? So it was actually playing on the Lightning, but in the Cup as well. So we've sh- that's good. That's a good result going into that first playoff weekend, um, which the Wildcats do play the Lightning um, to show that we we can beat them. We can beat them on our home rink, and um, they haven't got a sniff out of us. Yeah, Swindon have been really, really good on their own rink. I think a lot of teams will be sort of looking at that and thinking like, yeah, this is going to be a really tough place to go. Mm-hmm. I think the teams that are going to be in MK and Swindon's group are going to be like, yeah, that's going to be tough. We're going to have to go to Swindon. We're going to have to go to MK. Obviously, we know how hard they are to play in. Any, any team would and any yeah. fan can agree. Uh, obviously, the way the way that you've shown, obviously, you haven't lost to MK at home. You've given Leeds a really good battles every time they've been there, and yeah. you've been you've been you've been competing with everyone in your own rink, and um, it's 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 a good mindset to go into playoffs with because you know you've got that home advantage when when it matters. And that was without Aaron as well, so it shows that if Aaron does can't play in the playoffs, that the team still can get results without him. Um, in that game, Soldier did get injured. I think it was just unfortunate, wasn't it? Gale just unloaded one of his big checks which was a very good check it was a legal check um and it, I, I think so it might so it was his leg wasn't it his leg was in a brace so yeah, um, like that. yeah that's really unfortunate <laughs> for soldier um obviously he missed out on the final last night it still looked like he had a, a really nice time and he's been a big part of that mk team um for his first season with them um the steel dogs we won't go into it too much because a lot of these games don't really mean much but the steel dogs they lost twice to leeds but it, again, they're just having fun without all these players. They lost 5-4 um, at home. That's a really good result, by the way. Um, and then they lost 6-3 in Leeds. So they were still getting loads of goals. Um, I think, again, Dan, it's going to be a com- not a completely different squad, but we're going to see a, a different kind of squad next season. Um, and, yeah, I think the, the Sheffield lads, you can see on social media, they're just having a bit of fun, aren't they, in their final couple yeah. of games? They did also take the lead on that game on Saturday, I think, they didn't did, they? Yeah. I think they? I think they took the lead 4-3. 4-3 up. Um, obviously, that's hard to do as well. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, they're another team that's going to be um be looking for next season. Obviously, yeah, like you say, it's going to be very different. But I think it's going to be a very good change. I think, I think it's something that I have said. I think Sheffield fans are not going to like it because of the way it's been for the past however many years. Mm. But I think in a few, in a few years' time, and at the end of next season as well, I think I think it's going to be a really good change to the yeah, team. Yeah, um, they're going to have a lot of new faces, I think, who's going to come into this Sheffield Steel Dogs slash Steeler system 
Um, it's going to be new... exciting, I think. I it think will. It's going it to be will a really be... exciting journey for both both sides. I if think. you're a young player and you're looking to really go up the rankings, and I think Sheffield Steel Dogs will be a nice little place to go. Um, let's go quickly through the rest of the results. The Raiders get a four point weekend. They beat the Phantoms six three. Um, that could be a little taster for the group, Dan. Phantoms versus Raiders. If Phantoms um, drop into Swindon's and MK's group. Um, the Lightning beat the Pitbulls 8-1. Um, Dean Skins, poor Skins. He had some unlucky bounces in that game. One of them, he saved. It went all the way up in the air, hit him on the back and went in the goal. It was just, it was one of them games. <laughs> um, but fair plays, Pitbulls battled through it. Um, and then the Tigers beat the Seahawks 8-3. Do you think that the Seahawks losing both games this weekend may have had a slight effect on the final? Or do you think it was... It's just a one-off, and MK really did. MK did deserve it, didn't they? They were they were better. But do you think going into that, maybe they they rested a few players? Yeah, I mean, I think it would have been hard either way. I think if yeah. they played the players, obviously you're going to have players tired going into MK, which is tough. Yeah. And at the same time, you've rested your players, but you're still going to MK, so yeah, <laughs> it's oh, still yeah. going to be tough. Probably, I, th- I think the, the players on that team. Uh, no doubt they would have gone into that rink and they would have been yeah. so pumped. Silly question got... from me. Yeah, I, th- I think, uh, yeah, it's just MK. MK is so hard to play in and they proved it so much this season that they're just unreal at home. Yeah. Beating Leeds, they, they, I don't think Leeds have won there this season and that just shows levels to what they are like at home. Yeah, um, we've got one more weekend left. Oh, um, <laughs> got no sound effects, but one more weekend left before the playoffs. Kieran Brown is leading the way, 117 points. Rory Herman's five points behind with 112. I can't really see him catching up unless MK just have an absolute stonking weekend. I think Kieran Brown is going to come away with a back-to-back top point scorer. That is ridiculous, Dan. (laughs) (laughs) I mean... I predicted, I think we both predicted Herman. We predicted Herman, Herman. We both Charlie predicted Herman, Flippin so... predicted Brown, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I wouldn't mind if Herman sort of, you know, bagged a few points and Brown and Brown didn't. Just just for the bragging rights on Charlie, yeah. because Charlie, there's, there's quite a few things I'd like to have bragging rights over him. Um, <laughs> and that, that'd be one of them. <laughs> so, yeah, if Brown just wants to slow down a little bit, let Herman get a few goals and then, and yeah, we can all be happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um the fight well the final thing i really wanted to touch on is the playoffs um obviously we've got the format the two groups um it's looking like uh well the fixtures have actually come out i'm not going to go through them all because it's obviously different for each team but it's looking like Leeds, hull and bees are confirmed in one group and then in that group will either be telford or peterborough and then in the other group you've got milton Keynes, swindon raiders and then obviously either Telford or Peterborough. The first weekend, Dan, of those playoffs, I will mention it, the Lightning versus the Wildcats. That is a humdinger for the first weekend of playoffs. And I actually think the Wildcats will be happy with that because it means that if you needed a win from that last weekend, you don't have to go to MK for it. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I can't wait for playoffs. I love playoffs so much. Um just the mood around the rink, you could just feel it and the players love it. And it's just so good to watch. I love playoff hockey, even as a mutual. I I love it as a supporting a team, but as a mutual I can't I can't beat playoff hockey. Um we saw a little glimpse glimpse of it against MK on Saturday with yeah. a few hits flying around. Um a few big hits, big fair hits. Um that's what you want. That's what you want from playoff hockey. Uh, we obviously saw the Bees v Selway. That was that was a really was a tight really game. game. Obviously, that was pretty much playoff hockey. Um, it just made it gets you so amped up for it. And yeah. um, but yeah, like you say, that's a good point. I think going going into the playoffs, obviously MK are the standout team in that group, mm-hmm. and it's going to be hard to beat them in their rink. Um, I I couldn't really see them losing a the game in their rink to be honest through that playoff run. Um, but yeah, like you say, if you do need a win at the end of the group. I think yeah, that's a good that's a good little good little scenario to have. Yeah, um, we'll we'll go into our playoff predictions next week, um, after the final weekend of games because I don't think there's too much to review on them because they're nothing games really. But um, we'll do our playoff predictions in next week's episode, so make sure to tune in next week for them. Um, 
anything else to add, Dan? Um, congratulations, MK, again, for winning the league. Um, as I said, go check out our Kieran Brown interview. It was an absolute banger. Um, obviously, as a Swindon fan, playoffs, um, it's not been our best friend over the last few seasons. I've never seen Swindon at Coventry in my time of actually going to Coventry with the Wildcats. The one season we were going to go, um, Swindon put in an illegible player. It was Kelly, wasn't it? Um, on accident. <laughs> they didn't mean to do it, but we got a 5-0 loss. We ended up beating Peterborough 7-3. Um, but that was only four goals behind. So we've done all that hard work, but I'd, I'd love to see Swindon at playoffs. Um, I've never experienced it where Swindon have actually been there. But as you said, it is the time of the year where every fan looks forward to. Um, it is the best games in the league, in my opinion, um, especially because most of the teams are in there. Um, and that Coventry weekend is one of the best weekends of the whole year. It's what you look forward to. So, yeah, we're looking Absolutely. forward to that. We'll do our predictions um, for it next weekend, which we'll probably get wrong, just like we got a few wrong uh, for the season. <laughs> um, but, Dan, have you got anything else to add to that? Quite a, a long episode, this one. Um, but, yeah. Um, going to the B Solo game, I know we said it We said it on the Twitter, but a big shout out to Mog. I think yeah. Mog was oh, a yeah. big part of that game. We we said it. We were yeah. in the rink, and uh, he was such a standout player. He blocked shots. He was literally like a third. He was the second goalie in that game. Oh, um, he literally blocked an open goal. Oh <laughs> yeah, the clearance. It was one of the best clearance. One of the best saves from an outfield um, player we've seen, or or nice player we've seen. Priest was stranded. He made the initial save. It was an open goal and in comes Mog out of nowhere with this C on his jersey and just jumps in front of it and blocks it. I don't know how that's not gone in. Uh, but yeah, shout out Mog. He was unbelievable this weekend. And again, he's been a massive part of why they've got playoffs. I think without Mog, I, I really don't know if they get it because he's just led by example. Mm -hmm. And another one, uh, Ed Bradley. What a disgusting assist on that first goal for goodbye, by the way. Oh, the he literally pass. went behind the net, just passed it literally behind him, oh. short side. Oh, what a pass. I think yeah. that that was I think that was better than the shot, to be honest. I think that made the goal. Oh yeah. Um it was yeah, it was unbelievable. I think Bradley's done really well this season. We've said it since he's come back to Bees, he's done really well and he seems he, to be loving it there. He's is that's his, his home, team. Yeah, Bees that's his, his team. Home. So, and I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised if he resigned there, to be honest. No, I wouldn't be surprised. I think a lot of teams are going to be looking at him though for sure. Um, right, yeah. thank you very much for listening. Um, we hope you've enjoyed this episode. Again, well done to the MK Lightning. You got the monkey off your back. Now you gotta go and win playoffs. Um, thank <laughs> you for listening. We'll see you in next week's predictions. Peace. See you later.